Good afternoon, everyone. David Dubine here. Thank you for spending your valuable time with the Adapt 2030 channel. If you're gonna store pumpkins, take more care than I did. New breakthrough biology, scientists grow food without sunlight. Two-step process, carbon dioxide, electricity, and water into acetate. Wait, it's an electrical process using solar panels? I know I've seen this somewhere before. Sounds just like it. It got what plants crave. Idiocracy. Unexplained ancient map of the galaxy several thousand years old. And there are signs in the skies. What is that? I know what that is on the bottom right. An underwater volcano captured by satellite. So how many times has humanity survived this collapse and restructuring? So I've had C60 from a couple other companies as well. So let's crack this open. We're going to put it in the beaker and do the light test. Let's get one open here. As always, handy to have a pocket knife through any situation. And, you know, going through this change that we're into with the economy, we're going to have to think about things to sustain our bodies and, you know, take our own self-care back in our own hands once again. This is the perfect thing to do because, you know, not only healing your body, but having the benefits of C60, and there's so many, so numerous, so many studies done on this, now peer-reviewed journals. It's undeniable any longer. So if you're looking for your, you know, grid down kit, this is definitely going to be something that you're going to want to think about. Let's see what we do. I'll try not to spill this because the black is very difficult to get up, especially being uh, this type of carbon. It sucks everything in anyway. Try to put it into the beaker or on a, a white plate so you can get a look at it. Now, you got to have a flashlight. This is another, you know, something that would be SHTF required pocket knife, flashlight, being able to take care of your own body and especially the things we're going to be eating are probably not going to be as healthy for us. So, you know, thinking about cleansing yourself, getting rid of those free radicals, your diet might change, but you know, you would put this right on the front line. I have mentioned a few things like magnesium, the vitamin C, colloidal silver, C60 for sure. Let's take a look. Like I said, you're looking for um, a reddish tinge in the darker it is, the, more, the higher quality it is with the, the molecules into the olive oil here. So let's see what it looks like from the bottom. Oh yeah, right there you go. Look at the density of that in there. Even through this incredibly bright light, it's only able to penetrate and we'll get that hue. That's a good way to test uh, different types of oils too if you're able to have a light and coming into these food shortages and economic unknown times, you're going to have to know the benefit of every single plant and tree around your area. In addition to what you're putting in your body, the benefits. That's why I say this is high on the list to have around your home during those times. Make sure your C60 products are 100% ESS60 purchased directly from the lab at c60evo.com forward slash adapt 2030. And use the promo code ADAPT2030 to take an additional 10% off your order. That link's in the description box below. Click and go. And now on with the video. Beautiful image here. Nomadic. Think about how many times our society has gone through this and bounced back. Every 400 years approximately, we come into one of these cycles that disrupts agriculture, the economy, and also governance of said regions, countries, continents. We're gonna be dropping back into the pioneering lifestyle of the 1860s for a little while until humanity figures a few problems out moving forward. One of them is gonna be storing your pumpkins. I thought I had these on a dry enough surface. I thought I had these stored correctly on a very dry surface insulated with straw. 
These images were from the springtime when we were using the rest of the pumpkins just before we got into June here. You can store those for many, many months. Very nutritious as well. Interesting story here. New breakthrough in biology allowing scientists to grow food without sunlight. Now the process is two-step. Electrocatalytic, which means putting electricity into your substrate or medium to convert carbon dioxide, electricity, and water into acetate, which is the main component in vinegar. So they're going to use electricity from solar panels to break apart the molecular bonds of H2O water and carbon dioxide CO2 and have all these recombine through the electrolyzer. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say if you have H2O and CO2 and you crack those apart and you have hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon, if you reassembled those, could we not reassemble gasoline, methane, hexane, different types of gases? After all, they're called hydrocarbons for a reason. Could we not do methane, propane, butane, ethane? If there's energy shortages and they're doing this to crack the same exact molecules apart to make acetate for a growth process for plants, can they not break them apart and reassemble them for electrofuels? I mean, that is such one-fifth of one-eighth of a step away and nobody's considering that. This is the headline. You're going to break apart and then make acetate. Okay, I want to see the diesel fuel. That's me, though. Heterotrophic cultivation of yeast. Big words. Mushroom producing fungus. Photosynthetic green algae or green algae, however you like to say that, in the dark without any photosynthesis. So basically they're saying they're making this medium, this acetate. They're dropping the plants in there in the dark and they're starting to replicate. So what they've done so far with mushroom producing, algae producing as this is the sole energy source on the left top, no effluent, effluent, you can see the density of algae there. Algae biofuel fans. And if we're looking at the fungus, it looks like oyster varieties there are the choice. It says I get some of my compost from Monterey mushrooms. Here you go, I linked the description box below. A great 17 page PDF. So you know everything about mushrooms, blending them, cooking them. And then a little further down into the article, lettuce and many other food producing crop plants can utilize acetate for biomass. The leafy greens across the planet. And then if you look further down at the very bottom, cow peas, tomatoes, rice, green peppers. Each of these species has some enrichment with this process. Now further along, interesting engineering, artificial photosynthesis, but right down there in the blue. Combine their method with solar panels to generate the electricity required to power the electrolysis. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We're already having an electrical shortage anyway. There won't be enough electricity for all the electric vehicles. Now you want to utilize part of that solar production to push into food growing? Okay, we already have individual industries called energy industry, agriculture, but you're gonna to wanna to blend those two together using electricity in every step of the way. Oh, and shall I mention transportation? So three major industries are all gonna to consolidate to run on electric when we don't have enough electric to barely do the smidgen of electric cars that we have now. And they wanna divert it into food source, that's great. I like that th outside the box thinking of different ways to produce food, because this is the way we're gonna to have to move through 2030, 2032 to really start pushing some global food production so we don't get into massive shortages next year and at the end of this year and then moving forward less and less until we hit that bottom where the population equalizes with that food source. But to think that they could just divert electricity into this on scale and in mass, that's a little far-fetched unless, unless, I mean, it is on the trajectory we're going, but if you switch over to electrogravitics, magnetic motors, where there is true free power, harnessing from the ether as Tesla had described in so many inventions and shown the real world how it works, that trajectory, everything's possible. It's just the way we're doing it right now, it's not. And with all this acetate as growth medium, it reminds me of a movie that I saw once. 
advertising it's got what plants crave electrolytes oh brondo what plants crave the thirst mutilator remember that movie idiocracy uh we're dangerously close maybe that movie was more prophetic than it was comedy because here we are moving into zimbabwe zimbabwe america's next a wheelbarrow full of money to go buy a loaf of bread you might want to think about some storable foods during those times, right? Three-month emergency food supply. But there are going to be signs around us in the skies. And this video here captures one. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Thought I'd throw it here. A few five, six seconds of your time to see something beautiful in our heavens that is unexplainable. What do you think it is? In the ancient map of the galaxy, several thousand years old, and then if we go to the Lolodov stone out of Nepal, these two say somebody knows about these cycles that we're heading into and coming out of. We're heading into a very powerful cycle that's going to disrupt food production. But if you had that advanced knowledge, how would you structure and use that information to either control society or liberate society? Even if the ancients understood the spiral galaxy, that is light years ahead of what we are told what was common knowledge. Astrolab, the most mysterious instrument from antiquity. Now the antique Ethereum device is interesting in its own right, but this is a working computer in itself. Using the Earth as the center of the universe, which allowed you to precisely fix the sunrise and sunset. History has been reset how many times with new stories of how long it truly is or what cataclysm or what set of events wiped this out. Submarine eruption, Cavici, Solomon Islands. Interestingly here, it's named for the sea god, Gatoke. Now, incidents of this eruption back to 1939, but interesting how satellites capture that. You're looking at the far bottom of the six o'clock position where you can see that emanating that first eruption as it comes out. You can see clearly where the cone is. And then the water starts to drift in the tide there with the water currents, whoever that's moving through the strait. And it does seem to flare out. Now, the density of this above water eruption would have been pretty large in itself to have that much ash still mixed in the water column that's visible at that distance. That requires a lot of ash. And the way it looks for me at the five o'clock position, sort of like a moray eel, right out of the deep. And I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. There are signs around us everywhere right now that something significant is in motion. We're well past the beginning of whatever it is this phase is, whether it's a restructuring, a reset, a collapse and a rebirth, Phoenix kind of thing, whatever you want to term it as, use your own. We're in that way past the beginning, getting to be very noticeable across every single front in society, economy, government, space. It doesn't matter where you look, there's something that says, oh, huge changes are here. In the stars, in the sun, under the oceans, volcanoes, droughts, we're looking at it all. So how are you gonna prepare? The weekend's coming up, try to put something in the ground, experiment with microgreens, whatever you can do, anything. Get some positive yield this weekend. Maybe that'll be a challenge. What positive yield can you get this weekend toward your own food sovereignty? I'll see you next time. Bye for now.